Hi everybody, Jonah here again, aka the one who drinks. Now a lot of you have been asking me to cover probably the most famous cocktail, the old fashioned. Now in my experience, a lot of the old fashioned drinkers and purists are a little hoity toity for my tastes. The fun thing about making cocktails and just making anything is that you get to put your own interpretation your own spin, and make it yours. Now, today we're going to obviously cover the old fashioned. It is a staple. It is a mandatory, like you must know how to make an old fashioned if you're into cocktails. But, we're also going to be covering some variants. Some things that are a little more interesting, or, you know, at the very least, might appeal to your personal flavor preferences. We're going to have more variants here than Loki did in his entire show. Let's begin. Now to kick things off today, we're going to start with just the classic old fashioned, just like I promised you guys. When you're making your old fashioned, don't forget, you can do bourbon or you can do a rye whiskey. They both work and they are both delicious. I'm going to go with a bourbon today. Normally, I would use Buffalo Trace. It's more of a local whiskey, and it's honestly one of the most flavorful ones around here. But, unfortunately, I ran out. So we're going to go with just some basic wild turkey today. The reason I'm going with bourbon over rye is that the liquor is taking the forward flavor profile here. Anything you drink, you will get in whiskey on the front. And why that's important is bourbon is a lot better at showing off its nuances when there's not a whole lot competing with it. That's why I tend to use rye a little bit more when it is combined with some other ingredients. But when the main focus is the whiskey, I usually tend to go bourbon. So to start things off, the old fashioned is one of the easiest recipes maybe ever which is why it's a go-to for a lot of people. And that's gonna start with some bourbon. I'm gonna use a simple syrup today instead of a sugar cube. I know a lot of purists, again, argue for the sugar cube, but you're making a cold drink and you're stirring a sugar cube inside of it. That sugar's not going anywhere, it's just sitting at the bottom of the glass. Technology has come far enough I think we can risk some liquid sugar. I know, crazy. Aside from that, we're gonna use some Angostura bitters, and I'm gonna be using an orange to make sure that the garnish really puts a nice finishing touch on it. Don't forget, you can make an old fashioned in the glass. I personally, I've got my, my mixing container here, and uh, why not use it, right? Now we're going to need a jigger. I'll go with my bell jigger today. This is actually one of my favorites. It's a nice copper bell jigger that I got like right when I started this whole thing. So to start things off, we're doing an ounce and a half of your choice of bourbon or rye. Following that, you're gonna do about a quarter ounce to half an ounce, depending on how sweet you like yours. I usually shoot in the middle. A sugar cube is usually going to be around a quarter ounce of simple syrup. And then usually the original recipe is going to call for two dashes of Angostura bitters. Now, as you can see, I've got this big bottle. I refer to it as the Mamma Jamma. And this Mamma Jamma pours out like crazy. So I'm only going to do one dash, but it's going to be one substantial dash. Perfect. To follow it up, you're just going to mix it around a little bit. Any bar spoon will work, but if you have a normal spoon or... Hell, you can use your finger if you really wanted to. The whole point here is to just make sure that those flavor profiles can be combined and that the ice is getting stirred enough that it's going to 
dissipate a little bit into the drink. A lot of people will tell you put in a couple of drops of water or something along those lines to really bring out the flavor of the bourbon, but that's why we're stirring it. The ice melts and you'll never believe what ice is made out of. It's water. So you're gonna stir it for about 15 seconds, nothing too crazy, just making sure that everything is mixed together nicely. Perfect. You're gonna drop that right into a glass. I know some people can be a little particular about their ice. Admittedly, I'm one of those people, and you'll sort of see the difference. I'm gonna be using clear ice today, so it is a little bit more refined, but it's one of those things that like, when you look at it, it really does feel like a game changer. Through the magic of editing, I'm gonna drop some ice in here right now. Boom! So now, all you're gonna have to do is run a julep strainer, if you've made it in your mixing glass, and you're gonna pour it right over the fancy ice you have in your container. And you'll see, as it's poured, could not have done that much. And now you can see the advantage of clear ice. It almost disappears right into the drink. And then from there, all you have to do is add a little bit of garnish. Again, I'm using an orange. Just gonna peel a nice, mm, let's call it a semi-substantial. Peel right off the top. Break the acid in there by squeezing it. You want to squeeze the outside in. And then rub some of that extra orange flavor all around the rim. And then in we go. And there you have a classic old fashioned. Mmm. There's a reason this is just a, a staple of the cocktail community. Not only is it extremely simple to make, very flavorful, it just, it combines everything in such a nice and unique way. You know, the sugar to brighten up the bourbon, the bourbon that gets to shine through, just like I mentioned, lots of vanilla notes, lots of burnt, honey. It's, it's a complex flavor. So getting each of those individual notes out of your drink, really, it's why it's so famous. And then lastly, that orange peel really does make a pretty significant difference. The acids being sprayed over the top, it brightens up the flavor and it brightens up the nose. And as some of you may or may not know, a smell can directly influence a taste. So you get that orange, and then you have it rubbed on the rim, and those flavors combine in such a way that just make it, well, honestly, they make it tough to beat. Now, that might be our original Old Fashioned, but I promised you guys a couple of variants today. And I'm gonna actually start off with what is probably my favorite. It's what I actually designed myself. And it's going to be a dessert old fashioned. Let's rinse this stuff out and get right back to it. Now, as some of you may know, flavored whiskey is sort of taking over the world. And in my opinion, it's fine. I don't love it, I don't hate it. But I used flavor whiskey for the basis of my, pe of my peanut butter cup old fashioned. And I gotta say, if you're a desserts person, because it's pretty sweet, you have to try this. And it's so simple. So we're gonna start with two ounces of peanut butter whiskey. Now, I'm using Scatterbrain here, 
It's local, it's popular, and it's a little more on the peanut side than the peanut butter side. Less caramel, more peanut. And it is fantastic. But honestly, whichever you like. So I'm gonna do two ounces of the peanut butter whiskey. And while that is super good, like I said, this is a sweet drink. So we're actually gonna cut in one ounce of just normal bourbon. In this instance, wild turkey. Now, because this is so sweet, there's no simple syrup going in this one. The sugar is already in that whiskey, believe me. But I've got something a little interesting for you guys today. This is PB2, powdered peanut butter. Less sweet, more texture, and I gotta say, perfect for mixing in drinks. So I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of powdered peanut butter into the mixing glass. I know it seems like we've already covered the, that ground, but I promise you, some genuine peanut butter raises the peanut butter whiskey to the next level. And now, you're probably thinking, Jonah, you son of a gun, you promised me a peanut butter cup and there is no chocolate. You got me. Until now. These are some chocolate bitters. It requires such a little amount but it really does totally change the drink, making this into that peanut butter cup I promised you guys. So just gonna pour in a little couple of drops of chocolate bitters. Perfect. And then we're gonna stir it up. That peanut butter, the PB2 that I poured in, what it does is it activates when it's exposed to liquids. So it becomes peanut butter once it goes in the drink. But there is so much liquid in here, it doesn't solidify. This way, we're able to make sure that we still get the peanut butter flavor without getting this weird texture that peanut butter would bring into a drink. After stirring for about 15 seconds, we go through the same thing again. You just throw it, run it through a julep strainer, right into a clear glass. And I promise, I'm gonna do this one smarter than I did last time. It's all about personal growth. Happy New Year. <laughs> and again, that clear ice makes it so it just disappears into the drink. It really, it's pretty fun. I know, silly, but true. Lastly, I thought two different garnishes that I run through with my little drink that I created. One of them would be a peanut butter cup, actually. Stick it through a skewer, drop it right on the side, and it slowly dissolves in the drink. It's really good. Unfortunately, I'm out of peanut butter cups. Can't keep chocolate in this house, or else that son of a gun is out of here. So instead, I'm going to do my backup, which is a nice, piece of orange peel. Same thing that you do with the original Old Fashioned. You're just gonna crack that skin over the drink. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Rub it on the outside. You wanna make sure you get those extra notes, those extra flavors. And then right into the drink we go. Whoop. And there you have my peanut butter cup, Old Fashioned. Mm. The reason we cut this in, the bourbon into the peanut butter whiskey, was because it's so sweet. So we're able to dial that down a little bit, maybe add a little bit more drinkability. Because otherwise, you'd have two or three sips and be like, whew, I'm just done. Like, it's just too much sugar. But all those flavors combine, and you get this nice, textured, peanut buttery, mixed with the, you know, the vanilla from the bourbon, the caramel, and then lastly, those chocolate bitters. They bring in this sweet evolution to where, honestly, I swear to you, it tastes like a peanut butter cup. These things will sneak up on you, and I bet you two to three of these in, you'll be uh, down for the count. <laughs> mm. I 
do love dessert. Next up, we're going to go to something, for those of you who have a little bit more of a fruity flavor profile you prefer, still going to be old-fashioned variant, but I swear to you, this one is going to be very delicious. Now that I've gotten to recover from maybe the worst pun ever made, I'm really excited to show you guys about this next variant, and I call this the Blackberry Old Fashioned. Everybody has their own interpretations of this one. It's a little more on the mainstream side, but bear with me, because I think it'll really hit the niche that some of you are looking for. Hit that fruity flavor, and make it a little bit more drinkable. For people who have a hard time going through an Old Fashioned, Maybe it's a little on the liquory side, or maybe it's just not a flavor you're really into. This might be the one for you. And we're going to make this one in the glass today because we're breaking out the muddler. We're going to start real simple. I'm going to put four blackberries at the bottom of the glass. And what you're going to do, the reason we broke out the muddler, is muddle them son of the guns. Just going to make sure you get as much blackberry juice as you can out of them. And the freshness really does make a difference. People have tried blackberry juice or they've tried frozen blackberries. I promise you, fresh, fully thawed blackberries make a huge difference on how much you're going to enjoy this thing. Just like most old fashions, you're still going to go with a bourbon or the rye we talked about, whatever you like to drink. I want to make it very clear, and I make this clear in most of my videos. The best drink in the world is the one that you like. If you don't like any particular ingredient, swap it out. Find the drink that makes it so you want to drink it. But for now we're going to go with an ounce and a half of that bourbon. And then today we're going to be using some black currant. Now the nice thing about black currant is one, it brings its own alcohol to the party. So this is not going to be a weak drink, but it'll taste like a weak drink. And two, the whole power behind black currant is that it heightens other berry flavors. So because we have the blackberry in here, what we're doing is we're basically making the blackberry be able to stand up more to the bourbon. These are flavors that are clashing, and even though vanilla, caramel, you know, these flavors are coming in and they're pretty significant. You know what else is a pretty strong flavor? Blackberry. So they're coming here at this level, and then the black currant, boom! They apex at this perfect deliciousness. And I really think you guys gotta try it. Now, we're, we're doing black currant here instead of the sugar. There's gonna be no simple syrup in this one, because otherwise, it becomes a little too sweet. So we're going to go with a half ounce of black currant today. And that's it. You got to stir it up a little bit. You really want to make sure that you can get all the flavors combined. You're not drinking a layered drink here. This isn't shots. This is a cocktail, and a cocktail that I really love. And then as always, you drop your clear ice right in. Boom. And that's your Blackberry Old Fashioned. That's delightful. And if you're not a fan, if it's a little too strong, if it's a little too, I don't know, bold maybe for you, do not be afraid to add in a little bit of simple syrup. Or, you know, some, some comparable thing to sweeten it up, liven the drink to your satisfaction. I personally really enjoy this. And in fact, as a little, a little celebratory, 
add on here. Normally I don't garnish this drink, but what I'll do is I'll slide two blackberries onto a pick. I have these adorable little martini picks. And I'll drop it right on the side here. Boom. Now as I drink it, it'll be going through the blackberry and just make this an even more fun event. Yum. Now I've got one more variant for you. And if you're like me, the alligator was your favorite variant in Loki. Yeah, I referenced that earlier. We're coming back to it. Now, I would say that my dessert one was my alligator. But when I drink an old fashioned, this is the way that I make an old fashioned. So, I guess that this has to be my alligator. Let's reset, and I'll meet you here for the final variant of the old fashioned. Oh, baby. If you're gonna finish, you gotta finish strong, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna finish with the old fashioned that I make for myself and my friends when that's what they request. I want to be clear, there is fire involved in making this last drink, so if that's something you're sensitive to, feel okay to stop at any time. Okay, so this is my smoked maple old fashioned. It is my absolute favorite drink, and that's mostly because I am addicted to maple syrup. That's right, instead of the classic simple syrup, you know, the sugar that we'd be adding in, we're throwing in a nice organic maple syrup instead, and it is delicious. But, there's two parts to this old fashioned. The smoked maple old fashioned. So what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means we gotta smoke our glass. So, what I'm gonna do now, breaking out my just Gaudy, but gosh, do I love it. But my gaudy butane torch, butane torch, and we're going to light this on fire and cover it up with the glass. Now, a lot of people get really put off when they talk about smoking their glass and smoking their drink. You don't need this fancy container, although I have the fancy container. All you have to do is have a surface you feel comfortable putting with chips and fire, and then light them up, and once they're lit, you put them out. Simple as that. You cover the glass, and basically you're choking out the fire. It dies, smoke rises, glass fills with smoke. That's what my glass is doing now, and it's what I'll be doing while I make this whole drink. So, how do we make an old fashioned? Same way we always do. You're gonna put in an ounce and a half of bourbon. You're gonna be putting in half an ounce to three quarters of an ounce of maple syrup. Now, like I said, I'm an addict. I'm gonna be going heavier here. Feel free to do more, do less. The beauty of cocktails, am I right? I mean, look at that thickness. People wonder why you always order pancakes for breakfast. You get the syrup. You get the syrup. And then normally, I have a smoked cherry bitter that I put on top. Unfortunately, again, I ran out. Turns out, enjoying cocktails is a pretty expensive hobby. But, aromatic bitters, Angostura bitters in this case, you can never go wrong. The big mamma jamma gets one dash. But, if you have a smaller bottle, I would suggest two or even three dashes. Woo wee! And that's why we call it the Mamma Jamma. Same thing as always, a little bit of a stir. And this whole time, you can't forget, the glass has been smoking, so it's setting up those nice, intricate flavors on the side. It's really just, I used, I went with hickory wood today, I realize I called it the maple smoked, but the maple is in the syrup, not in the wood. But whatever, chair, whatever wood you like 
the taste of? That is a weird sentence to say out loud. But whatever you like the taste of, the smoke of, go with. I'm a huge fan of cherry, I use hickory, and I've even used maple. It really, it comes down to your personal preferences. And then, now that we're done, we're gonna go ahead and lift. Hopefully you can see the smoke billowing out of the glass. That shows that we've really smoked it during this time. And it's going to be the best part, in my opinion, of the drink to come. It's what makes it so unique and original. As always, we're doing the julep strainer. You're gonna want every ounce of this. And there you have it, your maple smoked old fashioned. Every time, it gets me every time. You wouldn't think that maple syrup versus simple syrup would have such a significant shift on the flavor, the tasting, the aroma, the interactions with the bourbon, but maple syrup changes your life. Well, maybe a little dramatic, but it definitely changes your drink. And that's why this is my alligator of my old fashions. If you haven't seen the show Loki, I'm so sorry to alienate you, but uh, one, get on that. It's pretty good. And two, for a similarity, it is a version of the drink that ends up being your favorite version, even if it's not the original. And I gotta say, Smoked Maple Old Fashioned gets it every time. All right, everybody. That's all the variations, well, not all the variations. Those are the ones I'm making for you today. I have more. Some are a little more interesting, a little more strange. Some of them swap out the bourbon. You can make, turns out you can make an old-fashioned, or at least an old-fashioned variant, with mezcal, which is a smoky tequila. Sorry, we're getting distracted. The point is, these are the ones I made for you today, and I hope you liked them. I'll tell you what, I really did. I genuinely, I really did. If you try any of them, please let me know. I want to know what you guys like. I want to know your interests in cocktails, because I will make anything. Good, bad, ugly. Anyways, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you like this one, maybe check out some of my other ones. I've made some really fun drinks that I'm pretty proud of, and I guarantee at least one of them will be frickin' delicious. Frickin' delicious. While you're watching some of the other videos, maybe subscribe, maybe like the video. I'll tell you what, the more subscriptions, the more likes, the more drinks, the more fun we get to have. Do it. I dare you. I double dare you. Anyways, seriously, thank you so much for the love and support. It means a lot to me. I love you all. My name was Jonah. And I am the one who drinks.